Welcome back, Custom Grands fans. On this week's episode, I'm going to show you how to make that. Step one, find a unique piece of lumber. Right there, I just saw a unique knot. I was like, oh, that's fancy. Step two, you're going to want to use an acrylic guide and then mark where you're going to want to cut the wood. Uh, for this specific mold, I used a 5 8 bit. And here you'll see a spade bit cutting through the lumber. Now what I do is I put the point right through it where I feel it on the bottom and then come on the back side just to cut it off to prevent tear out. Next step is to use a jigsaw, handsaw, or any type of saw, even a bandsaw, uh, just to cut outside that line to get it closer to the acrylic template guide for the next step. Now you're going to want to attach that acrylic guide somehow, uh, either duct tape, painters tape, and CA glue, double sided tape, uh, really anything. Uh, my preferred method is to use CA glue. And then here I'm just dabbing it on and then spraying the activator on the acrylic guide, press it down, make sure it all lines up and you're golden. Now I'm using a spiral cut flush trim bit on my router table uh, just to cut off the excess that I didn't cut off from my jigsaw. Just look how satisfying those shavings are. Now the next step here is to prepare the silicone mold. Here I'm just using MG Chemicals 8329 for my mold release spray. Now it's time to place the workpiece in the silicone mold. Here comes the fun part, epoxy time. So I'm using super clear liquid glass. It's a deep pour resin. Uh, the mixture ratio is two to one. So two parts A to one part B. After I stirred the epoxy just for a tad bit, I always add pigment later. Uh, here I'm using purple amethyst from Maspring. Now every epoxy manufacturer has their guidelines for mixing super clears right around three to five minutes. And after all the mixing is done, it's time to pour the epoxy into the mold. Now I do apologize, I forgot to film me popping the bubbles, but I just used a heat torch real quick to pop the bubbles, and then I added the weight onto the board. What the weight does is that it weighs down the wood, just because wood does tend to float with epoxy. One of the many advantages of using a silicone mold is that it's super easy to demold. Now it's off to the drum sander. I have the Shop Fox dual drum sander, 26 inch wide, and it makes quick work of sanding and also leveling the wood with the epoxy. Next step is to either router or chamfer the board just because you don't want sharp edges. Uh, my go-to is a eighth inch round over bit. And then I do manually hand sand using an electric sander uh, for 220 grit just around the edges because the drum sander didn't get it and then you give it a once over on the whole board itself and then water pop it by spraying water on it letting it dry to raise the wood fibers and then sanding it again and then you're going to want to use your favorite board conditioner to finish the board and here are the final photos thanks for watching everyone i really appreciate it and if you have any questions definitely leave them in the comment section below and i'll definitely answer them have a wonderful day